Hello everyone, this is Pratik and in this video we will be discussing optionals like what is the optional data type which is there which is introduced in Java 8 and uh, what was the reason why the optional data type was introduced and uh, what all are the methods which are related to the optional data type and those methods I will be covering from Java 8 as well as Java 11 version okay so let's get started so what is an optional class so basically an optional object is a container object so which may or may not contain any value so if it doesn't contain any value it is being considered as an empty optional object and its value will be null so basically why optional class was introduced was so prior to java 8 when we used to uh, call any function on any object so uh, method on any object in that case uh, we will have to uh, check the value of the uh, value of the variable whether it is null or not before calling the uh, method right so uh, and sometimes if we skip uh, to call uh, skip to check that but that value of that particular variable then it might give you the null pointer exception right so there is an example which i have taken it from the uh, java documentation itself so uh, so we have a computer object which uh, contains a sound card object and which in turn contains a usb object and that particular usb object has a string ver uh, version attribute which is of string type okay so in order to access the version uh, of that particular uh, usb object what we have to do is we have to do uh, successive uh, method calls like uh, we'll be calling get sound card method on the computer object to get the sound card object then further we'll be calling get usb ob method to get the USB object and for and last we'll be calling get version to get the version of that particular USB okay so prior to Java 8 uh, what we had to do was to put null checks before invoking method on a particular object so that we don't get any null pointer exception okay so uh, so in this case we first will be checking the computer object whether it is null or not then we'll be checking whether the sound card which is returned sound card object which is returned from the get sound card method whether it is null or not and then uh, we'll be uh, last at last we'll be checking the usb object as well whether it is null or not and then we'll be we'll call the get version uh, method on that object to get the version of the usb so this is how it was done prior to java 8 but from java 8 what we have to do is uh, when we are uh, uh, like contain when we have an optional object containing uh, 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 containing the uh, object of a particular type then uh, it, 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 it acts as a container so uh, it can have a value or it might not have a value so we uh, will not be so if, if we try to invoke any function uh, on that particular object then uh, we can first check straight away whether it has any value or not we don't have to uh, place uh, successive if uh, successive if conditions and uh, so we'll see how that happens uh, in in our uh, in this video like what all are the methods which we can use to check whether that particular optional uh, object has a value or not and based on that result uh, what we have to do we can specify that as well okay so uh, first topic which I'll be covering now is how we create the op optional object so so uh, this PPT has all the uh, method which I'll be discussing in this entire video but uh, from now I'll be switching to ID so that I can show you uh, how uh, a particular method works uh, which is related to an optional object and we'll be going through different code examples 
which I'll be showing you uh, and explaining you how it works. Okay, so I'll, I'll switch to the ID. So the first part is how we create an optional object. So there are multiple ways through which we can create an optional object. Okay, so first way is to create an empty optional object which is uh, nothing but an object which doesn't contain any value it's a null optional object uh, or we can say it is an empty optional object okay so for, to create that optional object we use the empty method on the optional of uh, uh, it's an it's a static method uh, in the optional class and uh, it will create an empty optional object of that particular type and there is a method called is empty it is available from java 11 version it's not there in the java 8 so what it does is it basically gives you a uh, boolean result whether the particular optional object is empty or not okay so this is one way to create an empty optional object the second way is of is by using a static off method which is like we are creating an optional object from a literal value say in, in this example we are creating a string optional object from a literal value which is test so it basically creates a, a container containing this particular value so if we try to print it it will print you an optional object with this particular value it will be printed as an, a container containing this particular uh, string value the third and the last way is to create uh, an object uh, using the off nullable method so the difference between off and off nullable is that that uh, with off nullable we can create an object from a null value as well but off method uh, we can't pass uh, the null value to this method but if we have to create a null object uh, oh, e e null object then we can use the off nullable method okay let me uh, run this example okay. so for the first example first uh, way to create an optional object which is an empty optional object it, it printed value true and for the second it printed the optional object with a value of test and third one we created a value from the null value so it it printed an empty it created an op empty optional object okay so that is so these are the three ways through which we can create an optional object let me comment this and move to the next part of this video so next part is how we check whether an optional object has a value or not so there's a method called is present is present so in in this example as well we are creating a optional string object of from a literal value which is test and what we are doing is we are trying to check whether that particular optional object has some value or not so the method which is used is is present let me run this code So it, it prints true since it has that particular value a particular value contained inside it so it will print true for that okay so this is how we will be checking whether that particular optional container object has some value or not okay next we move to if present so if say we have to perform certain certain function or method uh, uh, like if, if, if the particular op optional object has some value then we have to do something with that so in that case we'll be using if present method so let me hover over it and give you the snippet of uh, the documentation so if, if it, it says that if a value is present perform the given action with the value otherwise does nothing so it, it basically takes in a consumer function a consumer function is 
it's a functional interface where uh, it's a type of functional interface wherein it takes in some value and it does something but it will not return you anything so that kind of a function is given to this if present method as an argument okay so what uh, so here in this example what we're doing is we are creating a uh, an optional object of string type from this string which is my name itself and uh, what we are doing is we are invoking the if me if present method so if say a value is present in this object then what we are doing is we are trying to print that value so we have passed a consumer function here wherein the the string value which is contained within that object will be represented by the name variable and will be using the same variable in in our uh, print uh, system dot out dot print ln statement to print it out right so let me run this code okay so it it just prints out the value which is contained in that optional object okay so that is the third method which we have so third part of this video that if present method uh, we saw that how we will be using it to check whether it has a value or not if it, and if it has a value then uh, it will uh, do something with the value contained within that optional object okay let me comment it and move to the next part then we have if present or else method example and this is available from java 9 version and it's not there in the java 8 so so while using it be sure that you are using java 9 version at least so if present or else so what we're doing here is we are creating a string optional object which is an empty object and what it is doing is if it is present do something or else do something else so uh, let's let me hover over it so basically it takes in two arguments one is the consumer function and one is the runnable instance so if a value is present then perform the given action with the value otherwise perform the given empty based action so if say the value is present then it will execute this part of the uh, function which is a consumer function which basically prints out the value contained inside the optional object or if the value is not present then uh, it will execute this part of the function which is which doesn't take any argument but it simply uh, prints out the string that value is unknown so let me print uh, run this code so it says value unknown so as as you see that we have created uh, an empty string optional object so it doesn't contain anything so if it doesn't contain anything then this part will be executed that's why we are seeing a, f a string with the value with string value unknown is being printed so it's yet it is yet another method which we can use but that is available from java 9 version okay let's move to the next part then uh, next part is for or else or else get method so there are two types of methods more which we can use and those are available from java 8 itself so let me go through these code lines uh, so first we are creating a string optional object from this particular string and and we are also creating an optional empty object sorry op optional empty object so what we're doing is we are executing this or else method so it basically checks whether a value is contained in that object or not if 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 it contains any value then it is fine it does nothing but if it doesn't contain any value then it will uh, return uh, okay so if, if it contains any value then it will return that particular value uh, to this uh, func method or if it doesn't contain any value then it will give you this default value okay and the second part is if or else get method which basically 
it what it does is it basically uh, returns the value which is contained within this object if it is not empty but if it is empty then it will execute a supplier function so basically a supplier function is something which doesn't take anything as an input but it will return you some value uh, so this value will then be returned to this uh, sysout uh, method to print this value so let me run this this code so since the first object uh, contains some value it, the, the, the first uh, print statement basically prints out the value which is contained in that optional object since it is not empty but the second print statement basically prints hello because the the object on which we are invoking that method doesn't it doesn't contain any value it is an empty optional object so it will uh, so it will what it will do is it will just invoke this function and uh, uh, it will return this hello uh, hello string to this print statement okay so this is how these two functions work next is the get method so basically uh, uh, if, if say we have to get the value which is contained within this optional object so what we will be using is is the get method will be using to get the value of that particular optional object so whichever, whatever value is contained within that object will be returned by this get method and if say we are trying to get null optional value then it will lead to a no such element exception so if say we we create a string optional object which is of which contains a value null but if say we try to uh, execute a get method on this uh, uh, object which is containing a null value then it will return you a no such element exception okay. so let me run this So yeah, if you see here, for the first print statement, it simply prints the value which is contained in that optional object, and for the second, it will, since we are trying to get a value of the optional object which has null contained inside it, which is an empty optional object, so it will just print out, uh, it will uh, raise an exception that no such element exception. Uh, will be raised and uh, since there is no value which is present inside that optional object so uh, in order to uh, so w whenever you try to get the value from an optional object you can first check whether the value is present or not uh, with the function which we discussed earlier like if present so so that you can avoid such kind of exception while getting the value of that optional object let's move to the next part so we have a map method as well uh, which is there uh, with this optional data type so uh, basically what we are doing here is we are we initialize a string of ob string object which is text and from that text we created an optional object optional container so what we are doing is we are mapping uh, so when when say we have to map the value which is contained within that optional object into something else so we use the map method in that case so if say we have to map the uh, value which is contained in the optional object to its length and if say yeah, so it, it basically changes the value uh, so w what map does is if a value is present it runs an optional describing the result of applying the giving given mapping function to the value otherwise it returns the empty optional okay so map will itself will return uh, another optional object uh, whose value contained within that object will be the result of uh, this function being executed on the input uh, value so this will be the length of this string and uh, then we invoke an if present method because since the return type of this map method itself is 
an optional object then uh, we can create a we can invoke an if present method and since it will return uh, it will return true then uh, in that case we'll be executing this <coughs> uh, we'll be executing this uh, function and uh, what it will do is it will print the length of the text okay. let me run this so since if, if you can see here the length of the text which is 18 so basically it prints out the uh, length of this particular string so what it did was <coughs> it mapped the, uh, the particular string into its length and uh, it into an optional object containing the length of that string and we invoked the if present method to print the length of that text okay so that was the map method then next we have the filter method let me uncomment this so the filter method uh, is also there in the optional data type so let's go through this code to understand what uh, what it does so we have a string so we have a string text and we create an optional object out of that text and then what we do is uh, we invoke the filter method on this optional text so what filter does is if a value is present and the value matches the given predicate returns an optional describing the value otherwise return an empty optional so basically uh, what we are doing is uh, we are executing a, a predicate function so which basically returns you true and false based on the condition which we have specified so if say uh, when we invoke this filter method on this optional object uh, what we are doing is we are uh, checking whether that particular value which is contained in that optional object whether it contains this particular string or not if if it if it satisfies this condition then that same particular optional object would be returned and we can invoke the get method on that object okay but if say we have a f have a condition which doesn't satisfy the if we have a uh, value containing that optional object which doesn't satisfy that particular uh, condition then it will return an empty object and if say we try to run is empty method on that returned optional object uh, will basically will have an empty optional object since it uh, the the value which was contained in the original optional object doesn't satisfy this particular condition okay so let me run this okay so since that for for the first print statement uh, the filter method basically has a condition which is being satisfied by the uh, by the value which is contained in this optional object uh, it will return the same optional object and when we try to get the met value of that particular optional object it will return the same string and for the second one it basically says that the, the condition is not satisfied so it uh, the filter method returned you the empty optional object and when we invoked the is empty method it simply returned true so this is how filter method works for the optional object Next, we have equating the two option objects. So, uh, so there might be a situation where you want to equate two optional objects. So, there are certain conditions uh, when you can equate uh, two option objects. So, those are uh, two option objects are equal when it is also an option object, and both instances have no value present or the present values are equal to each other via equals method. So, so two. Uh, if if you are equating two optional objects, so both of them should be uh, of the optional type, and either both instances should not have some value present inside it, or should have some value which which can be equated through the equals method. So let's see uh, how it works. 
so we have defined three string optional object uh, containing the value optional object so basically object 1 object 2 have the same uh, string value contained inside it and we have an object 3 which has a different value so if say we try to equate two objects object 1 and object 2 object 1 and object 3 and we and then we declare a string uh, string variable and we try to equate optional object to the string object so let's see what would be the outcome of uh, these three print statements so first one says they are equal it means that since both of them object 1 and 2 are optional so it satisfies first condition and both the instances have the value uh, which are equal as well so both of them have some value plus those two values are equal as well so so since it satisfies this equal equals invocation satisfies all the three conditions then all the all the conditions of two optional objects being equal then it returns true for the second one object one object three since uh, the value contained between these two objects are different they are not equal so it returned false the third one why it, it returned false was because we are equating an optional object to a string object so first condition was we have those two have to be optional object itself so since both of them are not optional object it simply returns false so that was the example of how you would be equating the you would be equating the two optional objects then we have the hash code method so we can uh, return the hash codes uh, of those particular optional object as well so let me uh, run this code so it basically gives you the uh, and the hash codes which are associated with those optional objects so first one is your string so it returns you this value then we have we created an optional object from an integer one so its hash code is same as the value contained then we have a boolean object which is uh, boolean optional object uh, which has false as a value contained inside it so it returned 1 2 3 7 and an empty object has a value 0 so if I hover over it uh, it basically says that it runs the hash code of the value if present otherwise 0 if no value is present so that's why the last print statement returned the value 0 ok so the last example of this uh, video would be the stream method and it was introduced in java 9 and it was not there in the java 8 so you have to ensure that you are using java 9 at least to use this stream method on the option object so so the example is like uh, so we have a string optional object and we create a stream out of it so invoking a stream method on this optional object we create a stream out of it and so since uh, we can have we can invoke a for each method on that stream to execute so to to process all the items which are present in that stream so we'll simply invoke for each and we'll print all those values since there is only one value contained inside it inside the stream so it will print that particular uh, string value then we have an empty optional object so we can uh, create a stream out of it as well and we can print those values as well so let's see uh, what happens so it prints the first uh, the the value of the object value of the object uh, of the first object which we uh, which we created string optional and for the second uh, print statement it doesn't print anything but it's, it's an empty object.
so if if say you want to go through some of the streams concept i uh, have a video uh, uh, i've recorded a video for streams as well so you can go through uh, that video as well I'll, I'll i'll share that link in the description box and so uh, yeah this was uh, the uh, content related to the optional data type so hope you enjoyed the video so thanks for watching the video bye